Hey everyone, in this video I wanted to talk quickly about a question that I get asked quite a lot and that is around polarised training and how you actually measure the amount of polarisation. So how much time is spent at the low intensities, how much in the middle and how much time at the higher intensities. Now the confusion often comes from how that time or how that split is actually measured and there are really two main ways to do so. The first is using a time and zone approach where you'll take a training tool such as a heart rate monitor or a power meter and actually record to the second how much time is spent in each of those zones, whether that's a three zone model of low, middle and high, and high intensity or whether that's more of a traditional five, six, or maybe seven zone approach. Now this will give you an exact reading of how many minutes and seconds that you spent in each of those zones, and you can then look at a time in zone graph to see if your training is adequately polarized, to see whether you've got that typical valley curve. So if we're using a six zone model, you might see that there's quite a lot of time, uh, the majority of your time spent in zones one and two, not too much time spent in those middle intensities of zone three and zone four, and then a little upswing towards the end into primarily zone five and maybe some zone six, some, some really anaerobic and sprint type intensities. So the second way of measuring the amount of polarization is to use a more rudimentary method and that is called a session or a workout goal approach. In this case, instead of taking all of the minutes and seconds that you've built up in each of the zones, what you'll do is count entire workouts and categorize them whether they were low intensity, middle intensity, or high intensity. So for example, if you did a VO2 max workout, even though you might have a warm up and a cool down that might have been done at zone one and zone two, you'd actually take the entire workout, including all of those, and classify it as a high intensity VO2 max workout. So if you did five workouts in a week, and one of those was a VO2 max or high intensity workout, there were two that were recovery rides and two that were endurance rides, those last four constituting low intensity, you'd have one workout at high intensity and four workouts at low intensity, which would give you that one in five, that 80-20 split that you often hear about. So in summary, the reason why people get slightly confused is that they apply the 80-20 split that you typically get with a training session or workout goal approach and apply it to the time in zone. And using a time in zone approach, often you'll find that the split is more towards 90% low intensity, five, three to 5% middle intensity, and maybe five to 8% high intensity. And it's actually quite difficult to, if you're training with any kind of volume, to achieve uh, an 80-20 split using a time and zone approach. So I'd always recommend polarizing your training or measuring the amount of polarization using training tools like a heart rate monitor or a power meter rather than using, as I said before, the more rudimentary session goal approach. It just allows you to get more and more accurate with your monitoring. You know, these training tools will tell you down to the second how much time is spent in all these different training zones, whereas a session goal approach can definitely be a little more vague and harder to quantify the training stress as well. So I hope if you've been struggling to apply the polarized method to your training that's given you some food for thought and maybe cleared up a few questions that you might have had. So thanks again for watching, I hope you enjoy your upcoming training sessions and I'll catch you on another video soon.